Kimlin Company is sponsored by LowTeamRealty.com. Buy low, sell high with Keller Williams, Lake Travis Marketplace, Austin, Texas. Let us refer you to an expert agent near you. Buy low, sell high with LowTeamRealty.com. I'm your host, Kim Lillo, and I have so many things that I do <laughs> and so many hats that I wear, but I wear them all proudly. I am a psychic medium. I am an astrologer. I am a feng shui consultant. I also do resonance healing, and I am in real estate. So I like to find everyone their sacred space. I have... Um, my degree in metaphysical counseling. So tonight, we're, our show tonight is going to be great. We're going to be talking about astrology. What's up, astro? What's going on? I mean, I'm telling you, everybody that I've talked to is just about had it with this Mercury retrograde. Everybody I've talked to is just about had it with Uranus and Saturn and this weather, these weather patterns and all of this you know, um, all of this strange patterns that are happening. I don't know if you saw the latest clip of the sun um, doing the seven flashes down in Cancun. So I don't know if, you know, if that was something that was real or imagined, or perhaps it was just <laughs> a little bit of Margaritaville, I'm not sure. But there are some very unique, unusual, abnormal happenings uh, going on right now. And each and every one of you has a little bit of imbalance happening right now. And I'll tell you why. Because number one, the sun has moved into the sign of Pisces. Now, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. We have just moved out of the 2000 year grouping, I should say on the timeline of this particular span of the age of Pisces. And in this particular span, if you go back through to by 2000 year um, increments, there was always something that was worshipped or adored in each of these particular timelines. The Piscean 2000 year, what did they worship? Um, it was religion and it happened to be Christianity and it happened to be um, with the arrival of Jesus on the planet. And then all of these other religions came into play as well. So we've got a lot of branching off of different religions. Um, and we have a lot of religions that were, um, let's just say, overhauled. We had, um, you know, uh, the new um, updated version of some old belief systems and religions as well. So as we are now um, leaving the age of Pisces and we're going into, it's already started, we've gone into the age of Aquarius and Aquarians, um, as we've stated before, they're um, very independent. However, they're independent thinking, what is best for the group is best for me. So they consider the group, they consider, um, being one, uh, and also um, they consider to have a lot of technology, a lot of higher frequency, as far as electrical, as far as bringing in more, um, let's just say, spheres of light. 
And so as we are now, the sun has moved um, out of Aquarius into Pisces, there's going to be a couple of loose ends within the planet itself. Um, and I want to say it has, you know, you'll, you'll really kind of be kind of unbalanced in your belief systems. Maybe what you thought was going to be working for you, um, even, you know, even two years ago is not going to cut the mustard now. So you're a little bit imbalanced on how am I supposed to proceed to go forward as I'm working through all of these changes that are coming at me. Well, it's a good thing that Pisces are so compassionate because, and they're very creative and they're also very giving and they're um, they're self-sacrificing as well. So they're willing to put you first. They're willing to hang back and wait and be patient and making sure that your needs are taken care of. They're also very intuitive and they are famous for being very shy inward. I want to say that they have a lot of psychic abilities. Their third eye is um, uh, blossoming and born a little bit open and uh, ready to go than perhaps some of the other signs of the zodiac. Pisces is um, one of these signs that is mutable. So a mutable sign um, is a sign that can blend with others very easily. It's not fixed or staunched in their, in their own way. Um, they don't really introduce a new season um, as the cardinal signs do. So you will often see the symbol of two fish and they're going in opposite directions. That's because Pisces always go with the flow. They, they love to operate without a schedule. They love to fly by the seat of their pants. They love to um, kind of feel the waters first before they make a commitment. In fact, a lot of Pisces really are very adverse to putting anything in cement, in stone, because water is their element. And they're very uh, susceptible to um, everyone uh, their auric field or their sensitivities or their particular emotional states. And what happens is Pisces very, very uh, frequently become empaths. Empaths take on everybody else's emotions and they take on what their belief system. In, in fact, a lot of times they don't know if that's something they really believe or it's their family or their extended unit that they're with all the time. Important for Pisces to really take note of their dreams because Pisces rules the 12th house in the Zodiac. And that is all about unconsciousness. It's all about um, getting your guidance and um, tapping into the other side. So if you are um, under the sign of Pisces, you may want to see um, if perhaps uh, your dreams have been holding messages for you that perhaps you have not taken time to really honor the messages. And Pisces also are very compassionate towards animals. Um, they're very... Um, they're very creative with art, music, um, acting. You'll find a lot of Pisces, their trademark is in their eyes. They have very big emotional um, eyes. And your eyes are the windows to your soul. So um, Pisces like to observe. They like to feel. If you've ever talked to a Pisces, it's not, gee, what do you think about that? You know, do you think we should do this or do you think we should do that? Pisces are all about, well, I don't know what I think. I know what I feel. I feel the minute 
I talk to that person, I feel like something's not right. Or the minute I walk into the place, I feel like I'm at home. Or um, I feel like I, I'm troubled, I'm mad inside whenever I, you know, whenever I have to do something or come across authority or have to do it in a specific time manner, that gets me angry, that shuts me down. I like to kind of feel my way. I don't want any timelines about, that's why they're so creative. I don't want any, you know, schedule. I, if, if, you know, if I'm a half an hour late, who cares? You know, that that's how a Pisces um, loves to process this journey of life. So what happens, what happens is that when we have the sun going into Pisces that we have um, today, and we are on February 18th today. Thanks so much for joining. If you are Pisces out there and you would like a reading, it would be my pleasure. So if you would like to call us and get a free reading, the number to call is 844-390-8255. And I would love, but as a little happy birthday present to all your Pisces out there, <laughs> uh, give me a call, okay? And I'd love to give you a free reading. You know, Pisces have this special, this special way about them. They're very childlike. Um, they get along with children very well. Um, sometimes they are so giving and so self-sacrificing that a lot of them tend to um, not stand up for themselves, okay? And it's important that they voice their opinion. It's important that they voice their feelings because a lot of them don't. And they work their, their feelings out through their creative um, process. I know a lot of Pisces, who um, love to live by the water. They just feel like the dolphins are their friends. And, um, and I can totally understand that. <laughs> totally understand that. But each and every one of us have Pisces somewhere in our chart. And if you would like to get a free chart from me, you can get a hold of me on social media. You can friend me on Facebook. At the moment, we have Mercury in retrograde. When Mercury is in retrograde, it's it's in Aquarius right now in retrograde. Um, mechanical things break down. You lose things. A lot of times, communication will be jumbled. A lot of times, computers, uh, technical, um, uh, your phones, or perhaps anything that you're presenting through something. Oh, we've got a caller. So, um I'm going to just take a pause here and welcome the caller to the show. Hi there. Uh, Hi there. No, no, no caller. No caller. Question oh, from there. Vanda Guzman. I'm sorry? A uh, question from Vanda Guzman. She can't call in. She's uh, talking on the, um, she, she sent a message. She's a Pisces oh. rising. Does that count? Pisces rising counts. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you know your rising sign. So that's awesome. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. And, we've, and we've got another question from uh, Sheila. Okay. Uh, and she wants to know if there's any messages for me from my co-pilots traveling with me from the other side of the veil. Oh, that's who this belongs to. Well, you know, I was funny enough. I was meditating and did a card spread and they were all uh, lined up and said, hello from heaven. So um, that's, let's take Sheila first. So okay. Sheila, um, yeah, Sheila, let's take you first. Any uh, messages from me, from my co-pilots traveling with me from the other side of the veil? Yes, they're all standing around and they're, um, they're very, very, oh, wow. They're wearing party hats. They're blowing little horns. They're like all excited. I don't know if there's a celebration coming up uh, in your um, family, but 
it seems like everybody from the other side is celebrating. So they're um, very, very happy. And um, they're very, very happy for you as well. I feel like there is, um, there is a husband, there is a son, there is another male on the other side. And I feel like they, um, they are coming around. Um, I also feel like um, they, have, they have some type of connection um, that they want to say. Um, they have been helping uh, in, the, and this is going to sound kind of odd, but they're all talking at once. But there's something very, very special about Egypt or something having to do with the Egyptian um, creativity or um, something about um, something something about if you were ever to take a trip to Egypt, um, they would all go together as kind of like a little group, <laughs> like a little tourist group. Not that now is the time to travel, but if you are going to any kind of museum or any kind of special show, they're all talking about how their orientation of your particular family um, has roots of Egyptian heritage. And they were very excited. I don't know if you were talking about this recently or not, but they were very, very excited um, to see that and they want you to know that. Um, there's also, there's also, yes, your mom is here. Your mom is here um, and she's, She's feeling, uh, she's feeling very fine, very fine. She's actually presenting herself as, um, I want to say, oh, who is that actress? Oh my gosh, Loretta Young. She's presenting herself as Loretta Young. I don't know if you remember the show that Loretta Young used to have, but she used to come down the staircase in that long dress. And she says that's one of her favorite things now that she gets to do. <laughs> so there you go. Isn't that cool? All right. Well, I hope that um, I hope that made you smile tonight, um, Sheila. Vanda, let's get to Vanda, Vanda, Vanda. Uh, okay, she has got Pisces rising. Yes, Pisces rising cup. So let's do a little layout for you, Ms. Vanda. And with the Pisces rising, your eyes must be just huge, 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 huge. I know you're very graceful and I know you're very musical. Um, I love that about you. So let's just take a look and see what we've got um, for Ms. Vanda. So it looks like you're coming up with a challenge and you're saying, Shall I stay or shall I go? What should I do here? I feel like there's something coming up that you do not, um, you do not think you're going to get the best results for. So I feel like there's um, there's kind of like a crossroads for you. It's going to be coming up, and I want you to know that it's okay to ask for help from other people in your group. I think it's one of those things that if you are overwhelmed by um, some some things coming uh, coming to you, or you need some organization, or maybe it's marketing, but it you know they're saying to me, don't be afraid to ask for help from other people. Also, I think it's um, there's something about you see something one way and other people see it another way. I feel like there's some compromising um, trying to take place. I feel this is happening within the family is that um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of issues that need to be mended or need to be refreshed, but compromise is really the bottom of, um, of the solution with the family. And I think someone um, needs to, um, really needs to face up to another option. And that would be a compromising situation. So I feel like that would be um, something that you're going to be introducing into um, how to solve or how to resolve 
this particular family situation. I feel like you're wondering, you know, um, I've, I've got, I've, I'm hearing about an opportunity. I don't know whether I should take it or not. I'm hearing your guides say, wait, because there's even something better coming for you. As soon as Mercury turns direct, um, we have got a huge new influx of new things coming that are going to really percolate a fabulous week ahead. So as, Feb as February winds to a close, you are going to see some great dates. And I want you to write these down, Vonda, because you are coming up to um, when Venus enters Pisces, which is going to be on Thursday, uh, February 25th. That's going to be so good for you. You are going to, you know, you're going to have glitter all over you. So I feel like there's going to be a new opportunity. So whatever you think you need to make a decision on now, I say, wait a minute, because next week in the close of February, February has 28 days. So uh, the 25th is going to be perfect for you. We've got a beautiful full moon in Virgo that's coming up. That's going to be um, really having a party with uh, Uranus, who's who, who Uranus has had us all by the tail, by the way. And now all of a sudden, Uranus is like, okay, I'm over it. I know I had my tantrum, I had to blow it out, but now I'm going to have fun. I'm going to bring everything together and all of that topsy turvy severe weather and all of that other kind of shocking news is really going to calm down. And so the details are going to be put into place with that. So we've got some really good things coming. So I want you to wait because I think that, you know, you're going to settle for something smaller when the big one is just about ready to come through your door. Okay. All right, Vanda. Thanks. All right. We've got Linda Riley. Do you see love in my future? You know, Linda, you're a cancer, right? So let's take a look. Do I see love in your future? future. You know, this particular fall for you, um, late fall is going to be really good for you. Uh, you've been pretty busy. You've been pretty busy, pretty busy yourself. And I think you've been um, involved. I've got um, some big happy changes coming your way. In the near future um, is the card that is most important in this particular spread because that's exactly how I feel too. I think that there's someone that's gonna come in under the guise of something to do with either work or somebody's a friend of someone who you perhaps have worked with in the past. And I feel like this particular person is gonna come in, I'm gonna kind of put the toe in the water a little bit, not very sure. Um, you're not very sure if this person has anything that you're really interested in, but the more you get to know them slowly, you're really going to say, yeah, there's something here. And then you're going to say, gosh, I feel like I've known this person all my life, but I feel like it's really going to kind of really blossom or let's just say, um, the opportunity is really going to set itself in place. And I want to say at the end of fall, um, going into winter. So I love that a lot. Are you doing some uh, body work or um, uh, are you around a healer at all, uh, Linda? Because I, I feel like you need to be, um, I feel like you need to uh, be around is someone who can do some energetic balancing on you. I don't know if you've had some tests done in the um, yeah uh, in the in the recent past, but I feel like your body needs to be readjusted and uh, balanced out a little bit. So I think that that's going to be uh, much better for you. Okay, uh, I do think that um, I do think that you're uh, balancing. And you're open kind of from your solar plexus, your, your navel energy upwards, you're, you're flowing here, but from the navel energy downwards in the leg and the feet in that particular area, 
can really use some more circulation, can really use some more opening of your chakras. So I think you're kind of up here in the head. You've been up here a lot. And um, I get some flashes coming where you get some good things going and you you get kind of wrapped up and forget time. Um, so you may be a little bit more sedimentary than um, than you should be. So I just feel like let's open up all the chakras. Let's ground yourself with the earth star that's um, below your feet that will ground you into um, Mother Earth. And also, I want you to incorporate how much you've got here of energy all through the body. And that way, it's really going to make your um, your your aura just pulsate with the, all these rainbow colors. And you're going to be um, attracting new opportunities, new energy, and new love into your life. So it's not only giving, giving all the time, you want to start receiving in it as well. So you want to get as much circulation and love flow with all the different colors pulsating out there because people can feel it. If they can't see it, they can feel it when you're expanding your energy field. And that's really what tickles people and what um, what draws people together. They can feel your energy. So um, I think sometimes when we get right up here into, you know, the head area, I think sometimes <laughs> we kind of cut it off from there and we get a lot of mental stuff going on. So don't forget to run it all the way through. All right. All right. So look a little bit later on. We've got another question here from Ivy. I don't have any Pisces, but I do have Jupiter and ascendant in Aquarius, and I'm a Scorpio. Well, there's Pisces in your chart somewhere, Ivy. You just have to look at what house it's in. But um, if your Jupiter is on your ascendant, and it is in Aquarius, I feel like finally, you know, you're going to feel like finally the earth is catching up to you. <laughs> so I kind of feel like... Um, I've kind of felt, feel you going, well, I, I might not have felt as confident about what I know or what I, or, or um, what I was about or what I was supposed to be doing, but now I do. Now I'm on track. Now I'm not afraid to voice my opinion because everybody is now finally catching up to the way I've been for a long time. And I think you are going to take some type of a, a leadership position pretty soon as well. But I don't think, I don't think you're going to have your hand in the air, Ivy. <laughs> I think that you're just the one that everybody goes to because they know that you're the one that's, you know, um, that's going to get the job done. And not that you're going to want this particular leadership position, but I feel like it's really going to be a great experience for you. And you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. And you're going to, I think, incorporate a really um stable spiritual group around you so i say take that position i think it's going to really serve you very very well okay coming up for you i'm going to draw on diana cooper's deck for you tonight i just have a feeling that you want to get a little bit more esoteric about what's going on. And it comes up with Archangel Metatron for you. So um, you have the ability to contact Archangel Metatron and to ask him permission for you to wear his cloak around you. And it's an honor to receive this card, by the way, because Metatron's energy, it actually ensures that your 12 chakras are going to be totally open for you. And you are going to be able to hold a lot more light right off the bat. Um, this is going to be fabulous if you would like to link just pass on the fifth dimension, link right into the seventh dimension, you are going to be able to carry this, this frequency with Archangel Metatron's cloak. 
and you are going to be able to guide others. So that's where that leadership really comes in. And here we've got, we've, we're going to be mentioning Egypt again tonight, which is really kind of fun. But Archangel Metatron's retreat is located above the Temple of Luxor in Egypt. And that's where he holds his center for the planet Earth. So if you ever had any type of, you know, draw or pull to Egypt, this is the, this is the second time it's come up tonight. Um, Luxor um, has a particular ruling for the throat chakra to be able to voice exactly and to be able to speak what you have. Not only this, but this is going to really help your particular realm in the communication world where you are going to have very clear communication what you are um, wanting to say um, not only uh, through the throat, but also through the third eye. So telepathy is going to be something that's really going to be um, a tool for you or an edge for you. Okay, so if you wanted to communicate um, something with somebody, let's just say as a warning, and they are not in your particular location or local for you, you will be able to communicate with them um, telepathically. So this is going to be fabulous for you. You've got two Archangel Metatron cards and um, he's so powerful. Oh my God. He is just absolutely powerful. And you are the one that's carrying the mission to really help people ascend. So if he trusts you enough to let you wear his cloak and send you right up, um, to the uh, the higher dimensions uh, and to the seventh dimension, I really feel like um, that's something that is very powerful. So I'm really I'm really glad uh, that we uh, got to give you that message this evening. Also, in your dreams, you may be getting some downloads um, from the star system of Sirius. Uh, Sirius um, holds a lot of keys to enlightenment, and I feel like. Um, maybe when you go to sleep, uh, I feel like you may be either traveling to universities or schools on different planets. Sirius could be one of them where they are giving you extra skills that you may need for your particular mission here on planet Earth. So that's pretty heavy duty, right? <laughs> I would say so. Well, good luck with that, my darling. And let's see, we have got another question here. Reesey, hi, thank you for all the amazing readings you have given me. You were spot on in every reading. Love you. Okay. Well, well, it is always my pleasure. You know that. Always my pleasure. She, that's so cute. Okay. Um, we have got Mary Chris would love a message if possible. Yes, Mary Chris, let's get you going as well. I'm so glad you're all here in the chat room, just like we used to, right? <laughs> I'm so glad you found me in the chat room. That is fabulous. All right, Mary Chris, let me just zone in here and see what's going on for Mary Chris. She's got a lot of Valentine hearts around her, a ton of them. She must have re received them by the boatload for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Let me know if you did. Oh, great. Oh, look at all of this stuff that's coming up for you. Okay. You know, Mary Chris, sometimes you don't you don't allow yourself to listen to your own intuition. You kind of bounce off everybody else and see, you know, if you've got something coming up, like, well, what am I going to do? I, I'm going to ask this person or that person. But I really want you to anchor your own knowingness inside of yourself. Really tune into yourself. We were going to talk about a little bit of shadow work tonight. And I feel as though sometimes... Um, Sometimes uh, you want to act or do something um, and you hold yourself back. 
So uh, timing is very important for you. And I feel like this is all sort of kind of like a, a, a fun recipe that you're cooking up. And I see something really, really grand for you. Um, you've, you've come into your own with your partnerships. You're moving forward. I feel like, you know, the two that are together is absolutely amazing. I love it. I also feel like, um, like you started something or you wanted to go forward with something and then it was halted. Now, I don't know if it was due to COVID or if it was due to weather or there wasn't enough money or something like that, but there's a pause in some goals that you want to um, achieve. Now, I don't know if you want to achieve these together or exactly what is going on there, but don't worry. It's temporary pause. You're definitely going to be doing this. You're definitely going to be going forward on that. And I'm going to tell you that you're just, it, it's needless worry. So don't worry about that. The universe somehow is kind of working this up for you. So um, if you feel as though you're kind of disappointed because the opportunity has passed, it really has not passed. It has not passed at all. I feel like it's just being put on hold for you, okay? So I don't know if there was some type of an, a living situation that needed to be resolved, or um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask for a little bit more clarity on this one. Yeah, um, I feel like perhaps that was what was kind of held back or something wasn't working out. It is going to go in March, it is gonna go full guns. I've got uh, the prosperity card for you, the ace of earth. That means that there's a new money opportunity coming for you. So I'm excited about that. It could be, you know, a new, a new position or um, a new way of you making money, maybe a little something on the side. Um, but it's absolutely fabulous. You have the, the, you have the 10 of earths here. That is just like, that's the happiest family card that you can have. So I feel like everything is bonding for you. Everything's coming together for you. I, I'm so happy for you. So there you go. That's that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. <laughs> Thanks for coming and listening tonight. That's awesome. Okay, who do we have? We've got Kimberly. Hello. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for coming in tonight. What does spirit have to tell me about business relationships for my ministry. Okay, so I feel like sometimes, um, it, especially, especially, um, this has been happening for the last, I want to say, three months. People that have wanted to get together and move forward in business or wanted to get together, um, yeah, that wanted to get together and uh, go forward on something. I just feel like sometimes whatever was uh, whatever was put into place, it just it seems like through through no fault of their own, um, I feel like one person has gotten pulled out or they've got their foot out the door in these particular things. Now, Kimberly, what I see going on here is I see there's a big piece of the puzzle that hasn't been revealed yet. So we've got to wait for a couple of weeks. Whatever your business associations are for your ministry, I feel like there's three people involved and I feel like there's a missing piece. So either, either one person is being kind of on the fence about it, has one foot in and one foot out, and you're not sure about it. But I feel like there is um, a new way of reorganizing, or maybe you've just been doing that. You've been reorganizing how you're going to be going about this. And I feel like uh, it's just about over because it was up and down and up and down for you. It's just about over. I see, I see, uh, I see March and I see April just lit up for you, lit up for you. If you're waiting on some type of, a, you know, during COVID and all of that space was just left empty for, uh, for a long time, but this is going to start moving again. 
And I feel like if you're thinking about getting a, a new space, I feel like, yeah, here it is. I feel like there's a new teaching space or something for you. It's not virtual either. I feel like there's some kind of a hand-on teaching space that's going to come for you. If that's something or part of your ministry of what you like to do, I feel like um, the strength, you've got the strength, you're ready for it. But I feel like that teaching uh, place or um, it's being it's being opened up for you now and I feel like what you all your wishes and all your dreams just put them uh, put them down write them down and then just walk away because the universe knows it they're working on it and I feel like um, there is one one business partner that may be traded out for someone who is um uh, a female and um kind of a, a auburn hair and i feel like that's going to be much much better for you i feel like there's more of a trusting bond there um with that particular female that perhaps could be coming in i don't know if it's full-time or or part-time but i feel like that's going to be a better suit for you um but april is just like diamonds from heaven is coming down for you so i'm feeling really good about the spring for you okay thank you so much okay uh, Mary Chris, I'm so glad to have found you. Everything you said is on point. Trying to get my home business going. Thank you so much. Well, I feel like that's your side thing going on and that's your new opportunity for you, Mary Chris. Thanks for the validation. That's perfect timing for me. Thank you so much. And Reese, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, all the amazing readings you have given me. Well, you know, it's always been my pleasure. You've been such a good friend and you've helped me out so much, Reese. So, um, so it's always been my pleasure as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any more questions? I am trying to see if there's any more readings. I think I've gotten to everybody in the chat no room. More. No more right now. Oh, okay. If you do want a free reading and you would like to join us in the chat room. We are at www.ctrnetwork.com. You always have to do that. And there's a little chat icon uh, in the upper right hand corner. You just push on that. We're all in here. We're having a blast. So come and join me. With this Pisces energy happening, we've got some other things that are happening because Mercury is going direct on Saturday. <laughs> That's my little toy that I've got. I am so excited because what's happened to me, I'm a Virgo, I'm ruled by Mercury. And what's happened to me is that through some unknown glitch, they decided where my website is is to take me off. Now I've been with this company years and years and years. I mean, years. And I've been with this company a long time. So long, as a matter of fact, that the format that I was on was not going to be able to jump the frequency and go, you know, into the next phase um, with the websites of everybody else. So unbeknownst to me, they decided to take me off the old format and put me on the new format. And in doing so, my website jumped from February 2021 back to July of 2020. And they cannot get it off of that at this particular time. So they're working on it. They're working on it. They gave me 48 hours, okay, which would be... Saturday, which Mercury will be going direct. I have great faith that they're going to get my website back up and running just like it was. In the meantime, if you need a reading, um, you can always contact me with, by email at Kimla. Yeah, Kimla at KimlaLow.com or Kimla.Low at gmail.com. I have two emails. So through one of those, or you could just contact me through Facebook. Okay. Just, you know, friend me on Facebook and I'd love to um, give you a reading or updates for feng shui and book a session with me. Um, 
would love to do that. So uh, yeah, so all of that is, you know, really funny coming up. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit about shadow work. It's so important. And with the sun going into Pisces, we have the 12th house, which rules uh, shadow work. And everybody says to me, you know, what is shadow work? What is it exactly? And how do we work it? And why do we have to work it? And is it spooky or scary or, you know, anything like that? And I have to honestly say that anytime you would like to integrate yourself, so that you are as balanced as you possibly can, so that you have your yin and your yang together. That is the light and the dark. And a lot of people only want to be happy and they only want to be, you know, full of joy and all of this and that. And they suppress their shadow side. They suppress the other half of themselves Because you cannot be um, an entirely whole functioning person unless you know your shadow side and you become aware of it. Because what it is, is the light is the conscious and the shadow is your unconscious. And when you put them together, you will be able to break all barriers. You see, you will be able to jump the frequency levels. So if perhaps you um, you want to know anything about shadow work, the first person who came up with this that studied psychology, when I was in college, of course, you know, I took psychology, um, Carl Jung, we call it J-U, J-U-N-G. Um, but, you know, it's pronounced Jung, but Carl Jung <laughs> um, came up with the discovery of the shadow work and how you can integrate your particular person, your personality, and really integrate all facets of your soul so that you will not be missing pieces of your higher self. And this particular um, formula that I have come up with as an astrologer really helps pinpoint exactly where your shadow lies, okay? So um, if your sun sign, let's just say your sun sign is an Aries, it's going to be your exact polar opposite zodiac sign. So if you're in Aries, it would be Libra. If you're a Libra, it would be Aries. Taurus, it would be Scorpio. Scorpio, it would be Taurus. Gemini, it would be Sagittarius. Sagittarius, it'd be Gemini. Cancer, it would be set. I'm sorry, Cancer, it would be Capricorn. Capricorn, it would be Cancer. Leo, it would be a Aquarius, Aquarius, it would be Leo, and Pisces, it would be Virgo, Virgo, it would be Pisces. What does that mean exactly? That means, let's just say you are a Cancer, and Cancers rule the motherhood. They rule all of Mother Nature. They are the... um, they worry about everything about their family, about, I, I, I don't know what I would be if I wasn't worrying all the time. And what that is, is that cancers um, with their particular, should I stay at home or should I go to work? Because their opposite or their unconscious drive would be Capricorn. Capricorns are workaholic. They have got to be working. They have got to go to work. If they aren't working, they don't feel like they are value, not only to themselves, but also, um, but also to the, to their loved ones. And they feel like they have got to be working all of the time. So that is the shadow work. The shadow work in general is about anything that you, um, that, that stops the flow of making you happy or goes overboard, makes you depressed, um, anything you're addicted to, anything that you fear. Um, These are the kinds of unconscious blockages that perhaps 
are in your way of really enjoying life. So if you're a cancer and you are meant to be a mother, you are, you are meant to, um, to kind of uh, be, in, be in everybody's business to make sure that they're being uh, taken care of and that they're being loved and that they're um, going forward in life and they have everything that they need. You may be unconsciously fighting this, you know, um, this business uh, overwhelming workaholic about if I'm not working, that I'm not being good at home, but it's taking me away from home. So do you see how you have to integrate those particular things? And just like our friend tonight, Mary Chris said she's trying to open up a home business and work from home. And this is how you integrate some of those particular things. Now, if you are a Virgo, uh, like I am, <laughs> and you are, you know, you want everything in your place, you want to have everything perfect, you want to have everything clean, you want to have everything, you know, on schedule and on point. Um, and your opposite sign is Pisces, that it just goes with the flow. And, you know, um, they're just kind of addicted to another world as far as fantasy, as far as addictions for alcohol, um, as far as uh, a, a, allowing oneself to be creative um, and use all of the creative gifts. And Virgo, a lot of times, will not let themselves go there because they're so busy um, doing all of their tasks or organizing or editing or, um, you know, they're, they're, um, they're just, you know, trying to be, trying to have everything as perfect as it possibly can be. And so they're not relaxing. They're not enjoying themselves. And when they do, they perhaps will go into the addiction of not overworking, but the addiction of spacing out, the addiction of alcohol or the addiction of something that takes them out of that day-to-day -day timing where everything is perfect to the flow that, hey, you know, you just want to go when you want to, not, you know, sleep in when you want to and not deal with a schedule or an alarm. So do you see how this is working? Um, it's one of those things that um, we also take into consideration your ascendant sign or your rising sign. We also take into consideration what your sign is on your midheaven. So all of these things are really going to give you a nice rounded view of your shadow work and your awareness of how your opposite sign is really your shadow because you are standing, the sun is in your sign, your sun sign, okay? And what does the sun do? it will cast a shadow. So that's what we're talking about. And your shadow is directly across the zodiac, um, um, across the zodiac directly. And so we can talk about this and we can talk about if you're really having any type of emotional blockages or anything that is unconscious that you don't know, you have this terrible fear and you don't know why, um, we can walk through your shadow work with you so that you can integrate and you can use that shadow as a very powerful tool and that you can really feel as if you have um, not only control, but you have the understanding of wholeness in one. That's our show for tonight. It is so nice of you all to come and all to hang out with me this evening. I really appreciate it. So stay tuned next week, okay, because we have some wonderful stuff to talk about. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for listening. This is Kim Lalo. And until next time, may the angels protect you and guide you. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm.